I'm going to be doing the pour over several pours to manipulate the colour and I'm going to be catching it at the B stage with different tints on this particular build. Put some of this silver in. Just starting to drop in some random colours. I'm going to let that get on its way to a set and we'll come back. I'm just going to get some weights and put those on as well. That's really gone dark, probably too dark, but all right. Hard to see there. I'm starting to sit on top, which is good. Get into the stage where it's starting to harden. So we're starting to get the colour clashing in there now. So I'm going to let that set for a bit. I've just added a bit of metallic white. I'm going to let that cure. And that's made a really cool colour. Okay, so this is the start of day two. Now, very hard to see and it is very close, but I can just put my nail in it. You see that? So that's the B stage, and that is perfect for a second pour. So I can give it another pour now without having to um, key it in any way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a second pour now. So it's actually quite a lot of fun not doing up a certain colour and trying to get a finish. There's so many tones in here and um, pouring in different stages is going to give it quite a depth. So some stuff's going to be on the top, on the forefront and some's going to be in the back, like some of this misting in the back here. So let's see how that, that'll probably be the last pour and we'll see how that goes.
Okay, so just putting a couple of mil over the top of the whole piece. For this, I'm going to be using glass cast three. Slightly different mix ratio. This is two to one by weight. So, pretty simple to mix. There's just a few mil on the top there. There's no holes or cavities in that side of the wood, so I haven't really got to worry about last minute bubbles or gases being released on that particular side. Okay, so the great thing about the polypropylene, this one's really for release, and you see how easy that's gonna break off. Just like that. Very, very quick. This was just held by the hot glue and if we go around to the side, you don't even need a chisel, just bring it to the side of your bench and there you go. And often, maybe not so much in all cases, that the, the uh, back side is probably good enough for the underside of the table. Um, I want one side of this to be raw wood and the other side to be the resin. So now I'm going to take that for finishing which is involved in the polishing and planing. As the resin is self-leveling, obviously this top section, which is where we poured into, is level and flat. So all we've got to do is deburr it. Now we could cut that off with the table saw or plane it, but I'm just going to get some really harsh uh, 40 grit and just round off those edges. Still not absolutely sure about the finished size, so I just want to get it, keep it as big as possible until I've finished polishing and then trim it to shape. Okay, so we go from a single pass on the planer to this finish, which is quite hard to see on the video and understand that, but uh, it's just going to give you a quite a flat finish and we're going to have uh, the resin on its own with the wood on top with just a wood finish rather than the B side. The other side is going to be polishing the resin. Now this is glass cast three, so I'm just going to polish straight from here. I'm not going to sand it. That's the finish. Okay, so the back sides, which are gonna be bare wood with a finish, are done to about 800 to start with before I seal them. Now the front side here, because we've done glass cast three, I'm just gonna polish straight away, no sandpaper. I'm gonna go straight in with NW1 polish, really good. 